Orthogonal matrices. This is a little webisode to add to uh, the work we've done on the Gram-Schmidt process. All right, so let's recap that first. So this is a special class of um, square matrices we're going to get to, but let's go through um, uh, the QR decomposition of A, right? So we had this process in, in class where we start with the columns of A, and so they span column space by construction, right? And in general, it's n by n. We're, we're going to think a little bit more about uh, tall matrices, tall thin ones, but that's uh, not crucial. Um, okay, so we've got this. We've, we've figured out a way of systematically um, starting with A1, then A2, the columns of A, and turning them into Q1, Q2, Q up to Qn. And the, the vectors in here are all um, uh, unit vectors, and they're at right angles to each other. Right, so they form an orthonormal basis for A's column space, and we can write down the property of orthonormality here. So the dot product between any two columns of Q is one, if I equals J, right, for the same column, and it's zero otherwise. So they form a nice orthonormal basis. All right, uh, this character in here is a upper triangular. We run out of letters, or people you know, devise things from different places, and we ended up with the same thing. So this is R. It's not the reduced row echelon form. It's a new R. Upper triangular um, combining matrix. So just as L in LU decomposition told you how to combine the rows of U to give, give you A, this one, uh, R, tells you how to combine the columns of Q to get the factors of A. Right, so the Q's columns are very simple. Um, A's are whatever they are, and, and R tells us how to build them again. Um, okay, good. So um, it's it's good if we start with uh, linearly independent uh, columns, and yeah, we can deal with it otherwise. But uh, these columns are linearly independent. It's going to be more often true when uh, the matrix is tall and thin. So n equals R. The rank of the matrix, right? So the rank, yep. And um, right, so that means we'll get a nice full uh, set of vectors here in Q. All right, so that's just a little recap. Now, another piece that we found in there was that Q, because of its nature, and this is stepping away from QRD composition, because it is uh, a set of columns that are um, linearly independent and that they're, they're orthonormal. Um, then Q transpose Q is the identity. So it looks a bit like an inverse. And this is where we're going to go. So here's Q transpose. So we put the first column of Q, uh, lay it out, transpose. That's a Q2 is the second row. Qn uh, transpose is the nth row. And here's Q itself. Right, and so if we go through and just do a normal multiplication, first row dot with this column, right, it's Q1, Q1, so we get a 1. Q1 dot with all of the other columns, 0, 0, 0, 0, and that's what this indicates. And so as you go, and the last one, Qn, Qn, so we'll get a 1 here, zeros otherwise. And so wherever they match up, so Qi and Qi will get a 1, everywhere else is a 0. So we get 1s down the diagonal, zeros elsewhere. It's an n by n. We start with n by m and m, we get an n by n. So identity matrix, good. Now, if, so here's the, here's the sort of the, the big extra thing. Uh, if, uh, if Q is square, right, square, and it has this pro property that the, the column vectors are orthonormal, then um, we have M equals N equals R, right, so it's full rank, so an inverse exists, and right, we have lots of ways of thinking about this now, for example, the null space of Q should relish this is just the zero vector, right? Um, then, then uh, we have a nice. We know what the inverse is for the left. Then Q transpose Q equals the identity, and this has to equal Q Q transpose, right? And really, this is all the same as Q inverse Q equals the identity equals Q because of this equation. 
So we figured out before that if we have a left inverse and a right inverse, we know that a matrix is invertible, they have to be the same. So therefore, this is true. Um, so that's pretty spectacular. And we call these, we could call them orthonormal matrices, but these are very special matrices. We'll come back to them. We'll see they do all sorts of things. And you have some problems in your problem set, I think, that will uh, help you get at this. Um, let's see. So, but the, uh, the name for these we'll give is, we say Q is an orthogonal matrix, not orthonormal, which we might want to, but we don't, right? So these turn out to be important. Uh, we'll have more on those little beasts later on. Um, I guess I could say some more things, but I want you to solve some real problems. Uh, so. Any groovy properties? Let's just write down a couple. So for instance, the length, if you take a, if you think of this as a gadget, and there are various ways that this can be a gadget, um, rotation matrices and so on. So flipping ones, permuting ones, the length of this matrix. So we take X, we, we multiply it by Q, something happens to it. Uh, it's gonna be the same length as X. So that's important. So rotation matrices, for example, do this. Um, and there are a couple of other aspects, but there's, there's just one. All right.